Hey everyone, in today's video, I will show you how to create dynamic ranges using the offset function in Microsoft Excel. Once you know how to create dynamic ranges, you'll be able to set up some cool interactive features for your Excel dashboards. More specifically, we will learn how to create dynamic drop-down menus like shown over here. Here, if we add a month name to the list on the right, the drop-down menu automatically captures that. In the second exercise, we will use the concept of dynamic ranges and apply it to the charts such that if the tables updates for a new set of values, the chart which is linked to that table will update automatically as well. Many times in the dashboard, you might want to create a drop-down list for the users. It can be created by going into data, data validation, and let's say I want the users to pick up a value from the list of values. Here, I will specify the list from which I want the user to pick up the value from, and that way the, the list will pop up. Now, specifying the list in this way where we have just set up a static reference to a list of values, the problem is that if I add one more value into this list, let's say if I add August, the August will not show up in the list over here because the list is only taking up the range up until July. So by using the offset function, we can create a dynamic reference or a dynamic range. Let me first show you how we can create a dynamic range over here in Excel and then I'll also walk you through how it can be used in the data validation. So here I'm going to put an offset function, give the reference a starting point as J6 and then I don't want to move any rows down or any columns to the right. I just want to give a height of let's say we have seven months over here so I'm going to give seven. So it returns me up until July, or let's say if I give eight, then it will return me up until August. However, it's not dynamic. For example, if I add September over here, it doesn't return me September. So again, to make the height argument dynamic, I can put in a function which counts the number of cells that are there in the array. So I can put the count a function and then I can define the range in which I want the function to count the values. That way, the height argument in the offset function becomes dynamic. I'm just going to set up, fix the range references as well. Now, if I'm going to add September to the list, the height argument will increase to 9 and it will extend the range or the array range that the offset is returning by 1 to 9. Now in order to create a dynamic data validation reference, what I can simply do is copy this formula, go to data validation, and instead of defining a specific hard-coded range, I can give the offset function here. Now I can actually remove this, it doesn't matter. So for now, it's giving us the drop down up until September, but the moment I add October or November into it, the dynamic range will update automatically. The concept of dynamic ranges with the offset function is also very powerful when you're working with charts. Let's go to the next example in our file. Over here, we have a table showing sales by month. Let's say we want to set up a chart. So I'm going to select the entire range, go to insert, and we will set up a simple bar chart. Very good. So here it's showing us the sales for the six months and we have a bar for each one of them. Now let's say we have the sales for the month of July available and if I bring it over here, the chart unfortunately doesn't update because the range in the chart is not dynamic. It's only taking the numbers up until June. So with the offset function, we can also make the chart ranges dynamic. To do that, we'll first need to define a range dynamically for the y-axis and then we'll have to define a range dynamically for the x-axis. And then we can feed that into the chart. So let's work through that. So first of all, I'm going to use the offset function and define the x-axis range. Over here, we don't want to move anything and next we will define the height, which will be the count A and we'll give all the cells over here so that it extends dynamically. I'll just fix the references. So this will become our x-axis. I will label it as that. And now we will define our y-axis as well. 
I'll just copy the same formula which we did for x-axis and then just change the cell references. Now, unfortunately, due to some limitations in Microsoft Excel, we can not just copy this formula directly and paste it into the input of the chart. Therefore, we will first save these formulas as a separate name or a named formula, and then we can feed that named formula into the chart. That way, the chart will become dynamic. To set up the named formula, we will first copy the formulas that we have over here. Make sure that all the formulas are absolute referenced. Copy the formula and then go to formulas, name manager, and then set up a new name. The first one we will call it x axis. And here I'm going to copy the formula or paste the formula that I've just copied. And likewise, I'll do the same for the y axis. I'll first close it, copy the formula for y axis, and make sure everything is absolute referenced. Once the name ranges have been set up, you will see that we can use these named formulas anywhere in the worksheet. So for example, over here, if I write x-axis, it will still give me the same result that I was expecting or same result as above. So what we can do, and here, since it is dynamically linked, if I add August, the August is now gonna appear here. So we can just take these named formulas and feed them into our charts. So I'm going to go to my chart, right click, select data, and here, right now it's referring to a formula. I'm just going to remove the formula after the sheet name, and here I'm going to put in the x-axis, which I've just set up. Likewise, for the y-axis, I'm going to go and edit the series. Again, it's referring to a static formula, to in where I'm going to reference it, the name that we have set up. Let's click OK. So right now, the, the chart is showing the data up until July. But let's say if I take July off, the chart is automatically going to update. Or if I do Control Z or add July data back, the chart will show the updated picture. Also note that the data over here in this area is now irrelevant because our chart is linked directly to the named formulas. So even if I delete this set of data here, the chart still keeps on working. Now let's add some more data points in the table. For example, let's bring in the August and September data. And there we go. The chart works perfectly fine. 